Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Tonight we're taking a look at Canada's greatest slasher movie ever made. My Bloody Valentine 1981 was directed by George Mahalka. And when thinking about the greatest slasher films from 1981, this is one of the best and most remembered out of all of them. It even had a 2009 remake that was in 3D. Cool. So what makes My Bloody Valentine so remembered and so revered? The movie starts in a mine where two people start fooling around. We have a miner and a miner. Hey, wordplay. She's definitely over 18 though, so. The girl starts to strip and tries to get the miner to strip, but he's being weird and says no. Eventually, when he's looking at her heart tattoo, he pushes her on to his pickaxe. Okay, and this is where it needs to be said. You need to watch the unrated cut of this film. When the film was released in 1981, the ratings board needed a ton of the gore cut out of the movie. The director said that he had to cut about nine minutes of the total film, and that's how the movie has been for years. Paramount, who distributed the film, said that the footage was lost forever. Luckily, in 2009, Lionsgate, who made the remake, got the rights to the film and found some of the missing gore shots. They were added in and we finally got an uncut version of the film. It's only about four minutes of added gore, but it changes the film completely. With that being said, that's the version of the film that you need to see. Screen Factory rescanned the shots, so that's the version that I recommend the most. The gore effects are very well done and really enhance the picture. You see how vicious, disturbed, and physical the killer is in the uncut version, which makes him seem that much more intimidating. Again, I can't stress it enough, you need to see that version of the film. It takes My Bloody Valentine from being a good slasher movie to a great one. Back to the story. We cut to the mine again, and we are introduced to the main cast. All in all, these characters have personality, even if they are a bit one note. They seem more fleshed out than your typical Friday the 13th characters, but you really don't feel a ton for them. They are enjoyable to watch, but you won't be super invested if they live or die or not. The two main characters are Axel and TJ. You see, TJ is the mayor's son. He, prior to the movie, left the town of Valentine Bluffs so he could go out west to follow his dreams. He gave up a lot when he moved out west, like his lovely girlfriend Sarah. Unfortunately, his career didn't take off out in the west. He ran out of money, and he had to return home to work in the mine. But, you know, that's okay, because he can go back to the life that he used to live. But not actually. His girlfriend Sarah didn't know if TJ would ever return, so she moved on and started dating Axel. Needless to say, things are a bit awkward. TJ wants Sarah, Axel wants Sarah, and Sarah's just confused. She wants to come back with me. Full shit, man. Why don't you both just back off? Anyways, we need a reason for the teens to all be together at the end of the film, so let's throw a party. And since this is a Valentine's Day themed horror film, let's have it be a Valentine's Day dance. This is the first Valentine's Day dance in the last 20 years in this town. The first one since the accident. 20 years ago, there was an accident in the mines. While the town went to the dance, some managers of the mine forgot to check something and the mine collapsed, trapping a bunch of the workers. Harry Warden survived by eating his co-workers. One year after that, Harry went crazy and killed the men responsible for the mine accident. He chopped out their hearts. It's safe to say that Valentine's Day is a bit of a sore subject for the town, but that was 20 years ago, and Harry Warden is locked away somewhere in a prison. So what's the harm of having a little dance party? 
the mayor and sheriff think that it's a good idea for the town to move on. Until they get a valentine. The mayor offers some of the chocolates to the sheriff, but oops, that's a real human heart. For all those health conscious people out there, just know that was a really hearty snack. Aor to tell ya that my puns don't skip a beat. A few awesome deaths happen and the sheriff decides to cancel the dance. The kids don't care about that and decide to still have a party, but hold it at the mines instead. And whatever you think that is going to happen pretty much happens. The kids get picked off one by one, we get fun, creative deaths, and eventually the kids find out what's going on, but it's too late for some of them as they are trapped inside the mine. The police force is slow to react, and the ending really holds a punch. My Bloody Valentine doesn't break the mold or reinvent the genre. Heck, American slashers were still in their infancy in 1981. This year was the big boom in slashers, and everyone was trying to get a piece of the pie. Most of the slashers in 1981 were similar, and they felt like they copied and pasted elements of other films. It wasn't about who did something unique in terms of style and quality of the film, but instead it was about who could get their product out first with a catchy hook because the consumers were eating this stuff up. Audiences couldn't get enough of this in the early 80s. Films that stand the test of time hit all the right marks and have a certain quality to them. My Bloody Valentine has a lot of quality going for it, but it's not a traditionally great film compared to classic standards. But for the genre, it's darn near perfect. This is a must see for all slasher fans. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care everyone.